There are many countries, many democracies, that have a system different to ours. There are many democracies around the world where the system of government is that the executive are quite separate to the legislature. Our system is responsible government. The executive are here in this room for the purpose of being held to account every day the legislature sits. That entire concept of responsible government only works if the parliament and through the parliament the Australian people know which members of the executive are responsible for what. This is not some small matter. It goes to the absolute core of the principle of responsible government. And it was responsible government was what, uh, was what Ms Bell referred to specifically, where in her report she said, and I quote, the principles of responsible government were fundamentally undermined. I quote again, the lack of disclosure of the appointments to the public was apt to undermine public confidence in government. I quote again, the secrecy with which the appointments had been surrounded was corrosive of trust in government. If we could unanimously determine that the conduct of Bruce Bilson fell short of the standards, how on earth can the multiple ministries can question time after question time where we in fact did not know where portfolios had been allocated, how on earth can that not meet the standard? Question time is viewed as the most significant part of the parliamentary day when every member turns up. It's not a requirement that every member turns up. It is a convention. But we have to defend our conventions too. And the core of responsible government was breach with the multiple appointments. In doing so, the member for Cook did not tell ministers themselves that he had sworn into their portfolios. His cabinet was not told. The department secretaries were not told. The parliament was not told. And through the parliament, the Australian people were not told. The member for Cook in doing this did not just fall below the standards expected. He undermined them, he rejected them, he attacked them and he abused them. How do we even know that all this happened? We know because at the same time that the member for Cook was not telling his colleagues, was not telling the parliament and was not telling the Australian people, he was telling some journalists writing a book. He thought it was interesting to contribute to the publication of a book, but not important to let anybody know where it was directly relevant to them. And the defences that have then been offered, including the defences offered by the member for Cook through his lawyers to the Bell Inquiry, are logically impossible. Logically impossible. The member for Cook, through his lawyers, said that, and I'll quote here, however, this in no way suggests that he did not expect that the usual practice would apply and that PM and C would publish the appointments in the Gazette. It beggars belief that the member for Cook is now arguing that it was somehow just presumed it would have been made public in the Gazette, and yet he was making sure he didn't tell the ministers themselves. And when asked about the ministers, he said the reason he didn't want to tell them, and this was on the 17th of August, was I did not wish ministers to be second-guessing themselves. Both cannot be true. It cannot be the case that it was presumed it was going to come out in the Gazette and it was important for people to not be told. 
to this day. The different versions being offered by the member for Cook cannot, cannot reconcile themselves with each other. In the same way that when this started to emerge, when only health, finance and industry science resources appointments had been known, on radio the member for Cook said, so just can be, was asked, just can we be clear, are there other portfolios you assumed any control over? The answer, not to my recollection. I don't recall any others being actioned. It beggars belief that anyone in Australia's history could forget that they had been appointed treasurer. It just beggars belief. At the start of question time each day, when a minister is not present, every prime minister has an obligation to allow the House to know who answers questions on their behalf. And yet at those exact moments, the, prime, the former Prime Minister never once said that he, in fact, was sworn into different portfolios and could answer those questions as well. The pathway of question time, the pathway of what this House did last term was different because we were deceived. It was different. Questions were asked in different forms to different people because we weren't told. 